everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'll be showing you how to make a yukata pattern to fit your doll. I polled my patrons, and most wanted to see one that would fit the new YID body and similar curvy lady dolls, so I'll be making my pattern for Lumia, my Impel doll Lydia, because she's basically the same size as my YID. As you can see, we're not in my studio just yet, because I'm printing a copy of the cover for the first book in Rune and For All's book series, which I've been writing for years, and Lumia is also part of this series. I ultimately ended up deciding to do the book covers myself, because it gave me full control over the outcome and also pushed my limits as an artist. I'm not the best artist in the world, but I had some great help and learned a lot in doing this piece. I appreciate the input I got from everyone who made suggestions along the way, and I owe an especially big thank you to my husband for giving me input on every step, and also to his friend Estrafo, who is light years ahead of me in artistic ability, and doesn't even know me personally, but was willing to take the time to show me what I was getting wrong. I spent a lot of hours meticulously recreating the paint over she did for me, and I definitely wouldn't have gotten the lighting right without her help. My camera kind of blows out the colors, but the cover is on my website, so I'll share a link to that in the video description. And while I'm not positive it'll be up by the time this video is on YouTube, the digital pre-order for the book will be up really soon. Print copies are being more difficult, but there's more info in the description and on my website, so be sure to check those out. Getting this story out into the world has been my biggest and longest running life goal, so it's pretty crazy to finally be this close to having it happen. Anyway, let's get to pattern drafting, shall we? You'll need a big piece of paper, a ruler, a pencil, measuring tape, and your doll. A yardstick is helpful, but not necessary. Same with a French curve. We'll need just a few measurements to get started. First, you'll want to measure your doll's hips and chest to see which measurement is bigger. The larger measurement is what we'll use to draw the pattern. Next, you'll want the length. Most kimono and yukata patterns I've seen call for it to be the wearer's full height, but they can be shorter if you prefer ankle length. You'll measure the width of the doll's neck. This doesn't need to be precise, you just want an opening wide enough for the neck to go into. For me, 2 inches is perfect. You'll want the arm length, which is from the doll's shoulder joint, to a little past the wrist, or longer if you prefer. And then decide how long you want the sleeve to hang down. For men, the sleeve is usually shorter. For women, it can be short or even down past the knees. I decide to make these about hip length, so 6 inches is plenty. Those are all the measurements we need to get started, so the next step is to take that big measurement from your doll's chest or hips, whichever was bigger, and divide it by 4 to determine our width calculation. From there you'll want to round up just a bit, just to whatever makes it easiest to cut. My calculation comes out to 3.125, so if I round it up to 3 and a quarter, that's super easy to measure and mark. Since the yukata isn't form-fitting, it's fine for this to be rounded up and made a little loose. The first step in actually drawing the pattern is marking the length of the robe, which for me is 24 inches, the length of my paper, so I don't have to do anything else there. I can move right to dividing this into panels. If your doll is smaller, you'd just mark a line across the paper showing your bottom edge. We'll begin with the back panel. The back panel is our width calculation, that measurement we got from one quarter the hip or chest circumference, so for me, three and a quarter. I mark that at the top and bottom edge of my paper and use a yardstick to connect the dots in a straight line. Next, we'll begin the front panel by doing the same thing with the same measurement, an identical rectangle using our width calculation. So for me, three and a quarter again. Next is the piece that goes in the center front. Every piece has a proper name in Japanese, but for sake of clarity in English, we're just going to call it the center front piece. Creative, right? This piece should be half our width calculation. So whatever number you got when you divided your big measurement by four, divide that little number in half. I end up with one and five eighths, and I have to check that a few times because I didn't mark it right at first, and my dots looked a little crooked. Then I connect the dots with a yardstick. A yukata or kimono is traditionally made with the full width of a bolt of Japanese cloth, so there's typically a seam down the center of the back. I'm drawing my pattern to include that seam, but you always have the option of cutting your back piece on a fold so it's one solid panel with no seam. Up to you. After the body panels are marked, we'll go ahead and measure out the sleeve. The width of the sleeve should be the measurement you took from the doll's shoulder to the wrist or hand, and the length of the sleeve should be the length you picked times 2. 
Since I wanted my sleeve about 6 inches long, I'll scoot down to 12, and then I add another inch just to make sure it's close to what I originally envisioned. I can always cut off extra fabric, but I can't add more in, so it's better to err on the side of making it bigger. I pause to label these pieces just to keep my thoughts straight. Now I'll finish the pieces for the pattern body by creating the neckline. Mark one half of your neck measurement on the top edge of the front, and one half of the neck measurement on the back. Since my neck measurement was two inches, that's one on the front and one on the back. Then on the back panel, mark down from the top edge by about one quarter of your neck measurement. So for me, this is half an inch. These two points on the back should be connected with a curve, which will cut out to create the neck opening. I use a French curve, but you can freehand this of course. It doesn't really make a difference. Then we'll create the slanted opening on the front, both on the front piece and the center front piece at the same time. This is a little tricky for dolls because on people, you'd typically come down about 10 inches from the top and have the end of your slope there. But dividing that for a doll this size would be a very short, steep angle. The best option for dolls is to simply eyeball it. Whatever you think looks good, whether it's steep or shallow, go for it. I move my ruler around for a while before I find an angle that I think suits my doll's proportions. Once I find an angle I like, I draw a line from the edge of the center front panel all the way up to the neck measurement we marked on the other front panel. Trust your instincts on what works best for your doll and for the look you're trying to achieve. Optionally, you can add a curve to the corner of the sleeve too. Lots of Yukata sleeves have a curve, but not all, so you can leave it square if you want. Then it's time to cut out all your pieces so we can get the measurement we need for the collar. While the front and center front panels are traditionally connected with a seam, things are different in doll scale and you can absolutely leave the two pieces connected to save yourself some cutting and sewing. I choose to leave my panels connected, at least for now, because I don't know what kind of material I want to use for this just yet. If you're not sure what the difference is between a yukata and a kimono, a yukata is typically one layer, thinner fabric, and more casual. A kimono usually has layers, so it has two collars, and it's typically thicker fabric. This pattern could be used to create two layers so you'd have a proper kimono, but for simplicity's sake, we're just making one layer. When I cut out the sleeve, I cut it square, and then fold it in half so the curve I marked on one corner can be cut out identically on both corners. Once all the pieces are cut, lay the front and back pieces so the shoulder is touching. We can put something on these pieces to weigh them down, then we'll use our measuring tape to go around this curve and find out what the length of our collar piece needs to be. This doesn't have to be precise, and in fact you'll want to go out about an inch past the end of the slope on the front, which will be space necessary for hemming the collar when you sew everything together. I round my measurement up a little, from the 8 and 3 quarters I got to 9, just to be sure I have plenty of space. Then I have to decide how wide I want the collar to be. A yukata collar is typically more narrow than a more formal kimono collar, but creator's choice, make what you think looks best on your doll. I decide I want my collar to be three quarters of an inch wide, so I double that measurement to give me one and a half, and then add a quarter inch to either side for a seam allowance. It's important to note at this point that none of the other pieces include a seam allowance yet, so you'll either want to add that on by copying your pattern onto another piece of paper, or by simply cutting your fabric with extra space around the pattern. If you download my pre-made pattern, it already has the seam allowance included. And now our pattern is complete. You can pick a fabric and get ready to sew. Cut out two of each piece, unless of course you decide to cut out your back panel as a single folded piece. Now one thing we are missing is the obi, which is the sash that goes on top of the yukata or kimono, but these come in a wide variety of widths and lengths, so we won't cover that in this pattern video. I know I'll want this yukata to have a wide sash, so I plan to make one that's 4 inches wide, but I'm not yet sure if I want to make it long enough to tie it, or if I want to fake it and make something that closes with snaps instead. Another possibility is just buying a thick ribbon that I could use, which means that I wouldn't have to sew anything at all. 
All I sketch out for now is a template so that I can see the width I want, and I'll figure out the rest later, after I pick out what fabric I want to use, since the thickness of the fabric will make a big difference. That's all for today, though. We'll sew everything together another time after I've had a chance to go shopping. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video, and I'll see you next week! Thanks for watching! Bye!